Hi everyone, I'm Belinda. Welcome to my studio. Today I want to share with you a printmaking method using a piece of unmounted linoleum and a spoon to print a five color reduction lino cut. I have a simpler version of this in the works for someone who's never done this before, so if you'd like to catch that video, it'll be posted soon. Be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss it. In the meantime, let's take a look at this one. Here is my reference photo. I'm going to adjust the image by adding a book. My sketch was copied from paper onto the block and colored with colored pencil and then sealed with varnish. And here I am mapping out which areas will be carved first and what colors will be used in each layer of ink. You can use tracing paper to map out what you're carving first and which color of ink goes on each layer. The first thing I carve will be the whites and each subsequent layer of ink is slightly darker than the last. So you use a separate piece of tracing paper for each ink color and on each one you mark what you're carving. Stacking those in sequence will give you a map. You'll also need a registration jig so I've made one out of simple cardboard. The cardboard jig will hold both the plate and the paper in place. I'm using the width of a standard ruler to create the areas that will be the curb for the paper. So if I put the paper against those edges, I can cut the excess cardboard away. I'll use parts of the pieces that I'm cutting away to make extra layers to bump the paper against, as you'll see here. From the scrap I'm removing here, I'll cut two more pieces, the width of the ruler, and stack those to create a curb to bump the paper against. I've shortened one of the strips so that they fit together and make a nice corner, and I'm just using masking tape to attach those to the backboard. My linoleum block is six by six and I want at least a two inch margin. So I've marked that from the edge of the ledge that I just made with the strips. And then I traced the block so that I have exactly the size that I need to cut a space for it to sit in. The block will sit securely inside this little window. So when I ink each layer of color onto the block and tuck the paper against these curbs, I'll get alignment and registration for each color. This is my setup for carving and I'll put a link to a video about this below. The first parts removed from the block will be just printed white. So the entire block will be rolled with a light transparent blue ink and printed 20 times on 20 sheets of paper. I'm using Akua Intaglio Transparent Base with a drop of Thalo Blue and Magmix as a thickener. Akua inks are very rich and pigmented and I want to be able to see through my colors so I'm going to use just a drop of color in the transparent base throughout this block so that I can see one layer underneath another. This is Magmix or Magnesium Carbonate. It's used to stiffen ink. And once I have it um, blended, I do a pull down so I can test for transparency. Now I'm ready to roll the first color. I'm using a piece of non-skid underneath my block to keep it steady. And before I press the paper to the inked block, I'll spritz it with a little water and then blot it with a paper towel so I can put wet face down on the ink. Next, the inked plate goes into the window on the registration jig and the paper is put wet face down against those curbs so that it sits neatly on top of the block and is ready for rubbing. I'm using a small metal spoon because it's nice and slippery against the back of the paper. And I repeated this process 20 times with the blue ink. And there is the first color. If you're using tracing paper to map your carving and inking sequence, it helps to color them with colored pencil and then layer them so that you can see through. If you want to, you can use a light table or a flashlight, or if your phone has a flashlight on it, you can see through the layers. I'm gonna use the same ratio of transparent base and mag mix to create the next color. I've got a little bit of ochre, red crimson, and some leftover uh, gray to create a warm, transparent, gold color that'll go on top of the blue and it will create a green. 
I want to keep track of all my mixes, so I keep a notebook with lined paper so I can see the level of transparency, and I mark every color mix in that to use as a reference. This new gold ink is pressed against the already dry blue ink on the paper to create the next color on the print. The cleanup in between each color with Akua is very simple, and it's one of the things I love about these inks. With one piece of scrap paper and one Lysol wipe, I can clean my tools and my table and be done and ready to start carving the next color. One Lysol wipe will clean the brayer, the tabletop, the scraper, as well as the plate without any solvents at all, and I think that's fabulous. The third ink color will start to define the figure in this piece. So I've got my two color print for reference as well as my tracing paper map so that I can carefully plot where I need to carve next. I'm using a very small V gouge to outline the areas that I'm going to clear and then I'll switch to a broader U gouge to clear those areas and I'll move back and forth between the two taking my time. Since you can't put back what you remove from the plate, it's better to carve conservatively. In other words, leave more on the plate, print, and discover that you need to take more out instead of guessing in the opposite direction and just carving too much away. I test printed leaving the shadow near the jaw, the base of the jaw, and discovered that it didn't work as well. So now I've cleaned the plate and I'm carving that away before I print the next 19 prints. You want to pad your expectations on your edition because you will inevitably lose some of the prints by doing these little tests. Now we're ready for the next color. I'm doing a pull down on another transparent blue. This one's a little bit cooler than the first color and it has a little more transparent base in it. Each subsequent layer carved away from the block and printed now will have a little bit more detail in it. Now I'm ready for the fourth color. It's helpful to keep your print close and rotate it as you rotate and carve the block so that you're always looking at your print as you're carving. This is a transparent brown that will go on top of the other colors and it's a little bit darker than the previous colors, so it'll have a little bit more detail. Since most of the color that I've used up to this point has been a lot of warm tones, I'm going to go with a very transparent cool tone for the fifth color and test that out. I'm sorry, this is blurry. Um, I decided the next morning that I needed to go with a sixth color, a little bit darker, and I'm marking the plate with what I will leave behind before I carve everything else away. Keep a variety of gouges handy, both U gouges and V gouges in uh, narrow uh, fine tip and broad clearing tips so that you can move back and forth between the tools. The speed of this process um, has been accelerated to show you a couple of days worth of work in about nine minutes, um, but you should really take your time and go slow as you're carving and planning your print. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I'll be doing a beginner's version of a reduction cut, a three color, uh, and I'll be posting that soon, so be sure you subscribe so that you don't miss it if you'd like to learn how to do this process. The last color I'll use is a bone black uh, with a little bit of mag mix and just a touch of transparent base so that it's not so opaque that it overwhelms all the other colors. Out of the original 20 that I printed, I have 12 good prints from this. So like I said, pad your addition expectations with lots and lots of extras. The title of this print is In Between Chapters. So there's a five color reduction lino cup. Pretty fun, huh? If you have never made one of these and you're interested in getting started, I have a beginner's version of this process in the work. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video. In the meantime, all the supplies for this one are listed in the show more section that's underneath this video window. If you have any questions, leave those in the comment section and I'll get right back to you. If you have a friend that is interested in art making, uh, feel free to share this video with them. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up so that I have some feedback on whether you found this of interest. 
Thank you so much for watching and visiting my studio today, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.